Breathe easy. The quality is actually good. Oh, so that's the that's the actual water in mm -hmm. Oh. Oh shit. Just the, the labeling on change. Oh shit. Yo, yo, what's good? Motherfucking Breathe Easy, it's your girl T True. And today we got a big hitter in the building. Am I nigga? Formerly known as Quench, but now known as Simply Ray. <laughs> oh, ain't no more Quench? That's the guy that don't want to know. <laughs> oh, that's facts, and I know. This the big homie. But um, Quench would have went good because everybody, this nigga got some fucking water. His own fucking water and quench would have been good because water quenches your thirst. Well, I want to separate the past life from the new life, you know, because the past life left the history, you know, saying I want to associate the, you know, that past life with the corporate world. So, uh, tell us a little bit, tell the people a little bit about the past life. Well, the past life, <laughs> I mean, I was married to the streets, you know, and I didn't plan on cheating on for no nothing at all, you know. Mm -hmm. And she was not faithful to sent me to prison. Okay. You know, 18 years of my life. 18 years. You know, I sat in prison 18 years and I sat and calculated the money I was making by uh, and divided it with the minimum wage of that time and realized I was really making nothing compared to the 18 years that I served. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I sat in there and I plotted. I said, when I get out, I just got to find a, a new drug that everybody's addicted to. <laughs> you know? So that's facts. <laughs> behold, Maji Spring Water, all natural. So Maji Spring Water, what what does Maji mean? Maji is water in Swahili. So I picked that name because you know nowadays you have all these companies and waters with different funny names mm -hmm. and extra additive where you know in the street is cut. Mm -hmm. But Maji, when you purchase and drink Maji, you drink it pure simple water. You know, no cut, no chaser, no, uh, uh, what do you call that? Fluorine, yeah. chloride, and all the other stuff that they add into the waters. This is just natural spring waters. Natural no, spring no reverse water. osmosis. Okay. <laughs> just like a notice shit, too. Reverse osmosis. <laughs> but, you know, you gotta know your product. So, okay, how did this come about? How did Manji Spring Water come about? Where did it start? And who was behind it? Maji is, is, is an accidental venture, you know, as we look, we've seen the signs of the time where food shortages, water shortages, shortage on everything, mm -hmm. you know, shortage of breath. Mm -hmm. So, hmm. I started to prepare, me and my young brother, we decided that, you know, we're going to prepare for if time comes, there's no water. So, instead of going to the stores and buying somebody else water, we said, hey, listen, let's go find a pure form of water, mm -hmm. bottle it, and just store it for, for the future. Well, people will come by to stop by the office and they'll see the water. Like, hey, you got selling water? Like, no, nah, we're not selling water. That's just, you know, for our personal use. Right. And they would drink it and they'd be like, wow, the quality is magnificent. Yeah. Like, you guys should sell it. <laughs> you know, so and that's how it, it started off like that. People just wanted to buy the water that we have for personal use. And everybody loves the quality of the water. It's actually very good quality. That is dope as fuck because right now, like you said, it's a shortage of everything and um, entrepreneurship is like the way to go. Yeah, and that's one thing I, with COVID, I would, if a lot of people look at it as, oh yeah, COVID made this madness. When I look at COVID, I see, I see people doing a lot better than they was before COVID. Yeah. I see young entrepreneurs, you know, they, now they turn around and establish it only for themselves. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So because they had to. They had because to. this COVID shit made a lot of people lose their fucking jobs, their livelihood, all of that. So it's like niggas had to fucking think, like, what the fuck can I do to, if something like this was to happen again, where I'll be stable? Right. So so that's why and people I mean, always need water. It's an opportunity. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Some people take the opportunity. Some people, they decide, you know what, I'm just collect the free money. Some people decide, I'm going to take this free money. I'm going to turn it to and everlasting. It. You know what I'm saying? So Just like you said, another drug that people are addicted to. So right. you get that free money, flip that shit, and yeah. something legal. Right. And, my and this, was, water. this was born. You know? And also, like, when I said in our city, I was trying to, you know, think, like, what can I do that's going to keep me out of prison but put me back into the standard that I'm used to living? Right. You know, so I started coming up with different businesses. I opened up a, a cleaning business in 2018 mm -hmm. in Central Florida. You know what I'm saying? That's going well for itself. 
So what's you know, the cleaning business name? Clean, oh, cleaning, clean, uh, the quorum cleaning. The quorum yeah, cleaning. Yes, is a uh, commercial residential cleaning. Oh. Yeah. So that's that's you should incorporate the two somehow. Figure out a way to incorporate them. Uh, sometimes it's not good to put all your eggs in one basket. No, not really put them all in one basket, but just. You know, so that the name, you know, is it, like a brand. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, actually, if you see this world is owned by Tillman Holding, mm -hmm. and Tillman Holding actually owns everything else that's okay. under it. Owns this is own separate entity, right? Right. So Tillman Holding owns Maji, also owns the call room. Okay. You know, and it also owns a couple of local tax offices that you guys frequent uh, on a regular basis. Excuse me, prisoner turned businessman. <laughs> now we got some stories yeah we have some stories <laughs> you included we got some stories we got some history and I know that you, you used to be a bad boy yeah, I think we all got a little bad boy and then some of us just took it to the extreme some right. of us just know our limits so yeah. would you say that going to prison changed that or had a lot to do with you becoming this business mogul? Yeah, I have to say that. Um, in a way, you know, it was already in me. Mm -hmm. It's just that I didn't respect the boundaries of legal and illegal. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we feel that we can straddle the fence, like, okay. Right. But in the end, well, if the police don't get you, the IRS won't get you. Right. You know what I'm saying? So we just, I just took that energy and just, you know what, let me put it somewhere that in the end, I could actually leave a legacy that's not going to hurt nobody. You know what I'm saying? If children, they have something. You right. know, family, nieces, nephews, they have something, you know, Legit. that legitimate mm -hmm. that they can, you know, build from or have. They don't have to start from the bottom like we did. Right. So, it Smart. actually, actually uh, it did change my perspective, you know. So, at what point in your prison sentence would you say that, like, the light bulb switched and you was like, you know what? Fuck this mentality. I need to do something real. The day the handcuffs went on. Really? Yeah. The day the handcuffs went on, and I realized no matter how much money you have in your pocket, they say no bond. You know, and I'm looking at, I'm sitting in the courtroom, and I'm looking at these businessmen coming into the courtroom, and have worse charges than I do, and they walking out. Mm. And the judge like, yeah, he don't have to come to court. The lawyers mm -hmm. come to court like, yeah, my clients in the Bahamas right now getting married. Can you say wow. about And I'm sitting there like this guy got. You know, ridiculous charges, worse than mine, but you won't even give me a bond. You now know money talks. It wasn't even money. Because you can have money and still they just, it's, it's be, you being an asset to the community. You know? Do, do you think it's a black and white thing? Of course, we know that. Mm -hmm. But as an asset to the community, if you're feeding the community, they, they, they'll look at you like, well, you know what, he did this, we're still going to, you still going to get something out of him. Right. But at the same time, he's an asset. You make him become an asset. They need you. Right. So we have to make ourselves assets, not just are we here, we have money, because guess what? Everybody have money. Okay. What well, separates you from you having money and not having money, because you have plenty of people with money, you know, fool his money shall soon depart. Okay. You know. Say that again one more time yeah, for the people. Fool his money shall soon depart. All right. Y'all yeah. heard that? Hey! Preach! <laughs> so... What do you plan on, like, where do you plan on taking this, like, all your, your whole tillering holdings and all that, like, where are you trying to see this business in the next five, six years? Oh, that's too long. Too long? Yeah, that's too long. So, two, three years? Nah, I'm looking at next A year? A year. You know, so, so I where are you trying to, where are you trying to take it? Where are you trying year, to be? A year from now, what, a year from now, I'm going to have all the big companies chasing this, this brand mm -hmm. and wanting to buy me out. So that's that's a year from now, and I look at a year from now, and I'll be living like I'm on vacation every day. You know? So what's what's one company that you would be like? This is what I need to try to buy my my business. Oh, we have Coca Cola, we have Nestle. Nestle buy everybody's water. Mm -hmm. As long as you're doing something, they they come because they they want the money. Right. So you know, I'm just attracting the the big fish. You know. So right now, where can people purchase this water? Oh, right now, we're working on distribution. Uh, this is actually the promo bottle. Right. The official bottles will be out later on in December. 
Uh, we are already in a couple of vegan spots. Uh, That's like what's up. Two corner stores around the city. Hey. And we're working on uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. Some stores in Atlanta, Georgia. And waiting back from uh, Chevron to actually get back with me for my water to be shelved. So. That is big. Yeah. So that's what I've been working on. Um, I took a. I don't know. Tingle had the magic. I took a picture with Tingle and posted on Facebook. And the very next morning, two <laughs> magazines called me. You know, <laughs> yesterday around four o'clock, I was being interviewed by a magazine. You know. Really? Yeah. So what? What <laughs> magazine is that? Um, back to eating, and I think it was oh, the other one is warm enough today. And they they interviewed me, and when they found out that I was in prison, they for some reason it motivated them to want to interview me even more right because you know i've been out of prison what seven months now and, and that's it that's it so they wow, trying to figure it was out longer than that. now only seven months so they want to figure out how this guy just got out of prison seven months and you know and he's able to do this and they have people in society mm -hmm. that they're unable to progress well that's why i said like entrepreneurship is the the, the shit right now because it's a lot of people that once you have that convicted felon or you have that stamp on you nobody don't want to fuck with you you know what i mean so it's like you got to create your own lane you know what i mean and i feel like it's, it's, it. it's too late i agree with that to an extent i say that because i recently had an experience where i say you know what i want to get into the trucking industry mm -hmm. so i went to a school to because i want to anything i'm doing i want to have the hands-on right before i go into the business mm -hmm. So I went to this, school, this particular school, and because of my record, they said, hey, you know what, you know, give us some more time, and they turned me away. So I went to a technical school, and it was like, um, the waiting list was so long. And I told them, like, listen, I'll pay for it out of pocket. You know, they was like, well, you know, the waiting list is, is long. So yeah. I found a school, um, a no, uh, it's a known school, mm -hmm. and started going to, I was going to pay for it. And somebody told me, hey, listen, you know, um, you don't have to pay for that. You can get the government to pay for it. Yeah, grant. You know, just mm -hmm. because I got out of prison. Oh, I didn't know that. Right. It was, so it's a lot of things that applies to people in that situation, mm -hmm. and they don't know. That people don't even know right, about. Right, because they don't research. It's just like now nah, everybody, they learn how money moves because mm -hmm. of COVID. Right. You know, what they call, what they call it now, scamming is what they call it. Yeah. They, they just now learning how money moves, but the government been doing it. Okay. The longest, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the politicians the, and they shit. They been doing it. Yeah. So they just knowing how to go about it, that's not going to allow you in jail. And they actually paid for me to go to school just because I got out of prison. That, no that's other what's up. Yeah. So um, I know a lot of jobs, they be like, well, you know, you've been to prison. That's not the case nowadays. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of companies that hire people just because they got out of prison. They get paid to do it. Well, yeah, yeah. You know, some of them. A lot of them. Mm -hmm. A lot of them. Because um, my boyfriend works for Publix Warehouse. Oh, they always hire people out of prison. Well, they, they did at one point, and then they stopped doing that. Well, the thing about it is they'll hire you um, out of prison, but you have to be in that work release program. Right. You can't be just a nigga that just got out of prison and right. you're just going to, you have to be a part of that work release program. And then, like you said, they get paid to hire those right. people. Now, they get, they get bond. They get mm -hmm. uh, uh, the bond insurance that where they yeah. actually get paid mm -hmm. to keep people that's, you know, just getting out of prison. And, and them niggas be working hard, yo. Yeah. I'm talking about those are some of the best workers that they have because these niggas got shit to lose. Yeah, you came from not having anything. Yeah. Um, not to brag anything, but I was in prison. I was living very comfortable. I, I know. You know, I was very comfortable. <laughs> and, I know. You know, and you know, you have people in prison that they have nothing, so they create. Eight way. I'm talking, man. Listen, the greatest minds is in prison because you have nothing. Right. So you have to create. It's the same thing in the ghetto. You know, don't yeah. have anything, so you start to create. Yeah. But we don't know. Okay, yeah, we can patent this or right. we can trademark this. We don't know, and we don't have the resources to mm -hmm. put behind it. Mm -hmm. So somebody else come and take it. Right. You know, and when they come and take it, you just like, hey, I'm gonna give you a couple of thousand dollars. Right. Satisfied and, and you're with satisfied that. with and that. And then you look, these people making millions off of what you created. You know, so I I see because I be watching them shows um with like dudes in prison and shit like that um and I be seeing some of these dudes and it's just like damn why they didn't think about this when they was out on the street like you see dudes like taking soap and fucking carving out figurines doves and horses yeah. and elephants and shit like that and I'm like it's people that are paid for shit like yeah, this it's one guy he learned living in prison making uh 
shoes out of chip bags. Wow. And you know, everybody was buying city like little baby shoes and stuff yeah. like that and sending them to their family and stuff like that. Yeah, I seen so much stuff like the cars that they make. Man, I'm talking about they have cars where you pull a string over here, a whole other car pop up over here. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I see some stuff in prison where it's like, man. That's what I'm saying. It's like these niggas, they got it. But it's just, like you said, when they out on the street, they're not thinking like they're looking at that fast. You know what I mean? You have to, for you to, a lot of people, for them to actually see and want better, mm -hmm. they have to be at their worst, at their lowest. Right. You know what I'm saying? That was that's what made me like, man. You know, I was at my lowest. I'm sitting there with handcuffs and realizing money cannot get me out. Yeah. I was like, man, this is not for me. You know yeah. What I'm <laughs> so I made the best Gotta of do it. something different. Yeah. But when the time comes, you know, I'm gonna have to go a different direction. I mean, that's what I'm doing now. You know, going a different direction. You know, a lot of people they come out. Hey, man, you know what? You finna take your chair? What chair? Y'all can have that chair. You know, that chair cost me too much. You know, that's an expensive chair. What chair? What are you talking about? You know, they thought I was gonna come back out. You know, what I'm saying, got back into. Oh, you know, the old life, yeah, you know what I'm yeah, like, like you're like, gonna be back. Yeah, yeah like because a lot of niggas do. Yeah, so I told them that you, you want to support me, man. Support my G, help me build this company. Mm -hmm. You know, what I'm saying, like let's let's think of ideas we can invest legally and stuff like that. You know, right. we can build. You know, right? Because I believe one hand washes the other. Now I don't believe. Yeah, thank you. And um, what's that? What's the uh, the rapper name? I call him one of the greatest philosophers of our time, Rick Ross. Uh huh. You know, what I'm saying he got a song saying, "You want all these niggas rich by." summer 17 hmm. you know what i'm saying so that's how i feel if you around me i don't want you underneath me right. i don't want i want to be on equal playing field or you ahead of me you know what i'm saying that way there if i have a situation you able to help me Thank you, you know what i'm saying so i'm yep. always try to pull somebody up and i want them to pull me up too right everybody they want to they, they the man because everybody around them ain't got nothing right you know what i'm saying so when they step the little, out the little people yeah, under so them. they step out and mm -hmm. looking at him but what about when they put you in the room with everybody on equal playing field how right. you gonna manage this okay you know what i'm saying you can't manage because you really don't have it in you it's the truth. and i feel like that's that's the mentality of a lot of um i'm not gonna say black people because I've, I've seen every race do it it's that crabs in a barrel thing where it's like they want to be the only one yeah with something you it's know what just, i mean it's just more in the black community and you know the, and the funny thing is like i was thinking about this on the way here like my greatest my biggest supporters is actually black women hmm. you have your own water oh my god ladies mm -hmm. they start they do more than just purchase they start spreading the word right, support right, right. you know what i'm saying it's like they're trying to elevate right you know what i'm saying but you tell the dude to be like yeah boy that's cool you know what yep, i'm saying yep. they give you back yeah. you know what i'm saying that's it you know what i'm saying they from they like i ain't trying to see this yeah. nigga come up you know and, and, and that's one thing especially like um right like where i'm currently like up up the road and um it's a different demographic mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying the hood is the hood everywhere you go right right but once you step outside of the hood it's like it's like the community sticks together a little bit more you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying they kind of support each other a little bit more outside of the hood yeah because the hood they just you know every hood you go to is the same yeah same everybody mindset. for themselves because yeah. it's rough you know what i mean and nobody want to help nobody so they're like shit when i make it i don't give a fuck about you because you didn't help me mm -hmm. you know yeah that's but I mean, I'm, I'm starting to see some of that change a little bit because I feel like, yeah, like black people are starting to get woke, that woke movement. So they're starting to be like, you know what, maybe we do need to come together and, you know what I mean, work together. And, and yeah, they, they starting to see that. Yeah. What I realized that was um, Black Panther. When that movie came out, mm -hmm. I noticed a shift because now what ended up happening is black people starting to realize their value mm -hmm. for an example that movie was the highest gross yeah. Marvel movie mm -hmm. and the entire cast was black right how much you think that cast got paid <laughs> probably pennies Iron Man makes 60 million the guy oh, this, oh that, the guy played Iron Man yeah I, I don't know the name okay he, he makes 60 million for playing that role <laughs> the whole entire cast of Black Panther got paid 10 million Wow, that they had to split. That they had to split. Chadwick, which was the the the, the head they, star, yeah. I think he made like two million dollars. Wow. Angela Bassett only made like five hundred thousand. Wow. You know, so that's just to show. But they notice people notice. Hey, listen, we have a value. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So now I made this. So I know you need me. You gonna pay me? So now the people starting to wake up, realizing, hey. Right. We have a value, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So now, that's why if you look at inflation now, 
It ain't just it ain't just I know. COVID. I know. It's people knowing their value. Hey, you're not gonna pay me this because this is what I'm worth. Right. You know, so mm -hmm. if you gotta roll over to the consumer, this is what I'm gonna get paid. That's mm -hmm. what I'm worth. I'm making you that. So I see it I see a change. It's is is a you know, let me say a little Yeah, shit. that's what I say. Like it's that woke movement. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like black people ain't just whatever, okay, yeah, just give me this, it's about the money. Now like you said, it's like hold up now. I'm valuable, like I'm an asset, right. you know what I mean, yeah, like you need asset, me, yeah. you know what I mean, but when you look at shit, real, really, like everything that's go on, going on, white people in their movies and stuff, if you ever notice, it comes from like black culture, the way how they talk, the slang, oh it's this for me, and you know shit yeah. that they say and stuff, like it's, it comes from black people, Right. like they don't have their own culture, or you know what I mean, or not, like anything just, for themselves. <laughs> they do. What do you really think about? Like what? To capitalize off all. Like what? Like what? Yeah. Shh, country music. Man, the fuck out of here, fucking country music. You know, you <laughs> country music is weak. Yeah, but and a know. lot of people don't like country music. I, I beg to differ. I beg to differ. Country music make more money, right? They get paid a lot more money than any rapper. But yeah. that's because it's white people behind it. Is is who's behind black music? No, but what I mean is black people are the ones who support their black music. You know what I'm saying? No. Most of the big rappers that's actually making money is not being made by... I went to an Outkast concert. You know all who's in attendance? Whites. But Outkast get money. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. So you can't use that always. But what I'm saying is like you're saying country music. Like yeah, there's country artists that... You you probably never heard of that make more money than Outkast. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. But that's because they got their white people behind them. Them white people with money. And blacks also. They but the thing I'm trying to show you, but rap music generates more money than country music. Just like football. Football generate more money than baseball, basketball, but get they get paid less. Rap music, because if you look at the movies, everything, you look at a commercial, is a hip hop beat or something. It right. generates more, but we get. But you see what I'm saying, though? It's like everything that's behind them right. comes from, like, black. Because they have the money to capitalize off our. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm saying. Right, but that's why I said, like, they don't have anything for themselves. Mm. We, I mean, yeah, they have country music, but I mean, as far as, like, moving with, with culture, like, it's, oh, it's on our back. Right. I you know what I'm saying? Like everything that you see is popping, these TikTok videos, these dances mm -hmm. and shit, it's black people making these dances. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it was a big thing the other day where they were showing, um, uh, what's the nigga name on TV, Jimmy Kimmel or something like that, with that talk show. Mm -hmm. And yeah, all these white people on his show doing these TikTok dances. Right. So then they, that's when they did the movement where they were like banning, nobody wasn't making no more TikTok, like the, the black creators. Right. They weren't making any more TikTok because it was like, y'all not recognizing us, but right. y'all putting these white people on and it's us that's yeah. really making the shit. That's nothing new. Just think about it in the, in the 50s and 60s. Mm -hmm. We made a song that made a white group, the white group. Yeah. You know? So that's that's <laughs> nothing. They just know how to capitalize. Mm -hmm. You know, and we in a capitalist country. Right. You know what I'm saying? We talk capitalism from the day that, you know, our eyes can see. Right. If we see opportunity, capitalize on the opportunity. Some of us, we don't. We just try to capitalize on each other instead exactly. of the opportunity. Exactly. You know exactly. What I'm so that's one of the reasons why they say like you go inside a white store and a, a Louis Vuitton store and they have a fucking cotton white T-shirt and they selling it for a thousand dollars. You go in there, you buy it for a thousand dollars. But you go inside a black store, they got that same cotton T-shirt, but it's their brand on it. They selling it for thirty five dollars. You trying to get it for twenty? Yeah, but I have to say something about it. It's going like it's not even about the money or, for example. I'm Haitian. Ça passe. Right. When you go to a Haitian restaurant, their customer service is horrible. Jamaica. Yeah, too. The Jamaica's too. Mm -hmm. Man, let's not pull up that Dutch pot the other day. <laughs> Man, as soon as you pull up to the window, oh, I don't have this. I don't have. They even say the more. I don't have this. I don't have that. I don't, don't have ask. This. I'm like, like seriously. But that food be good as well. The food is good. Mm -hmm. But the customer service. So now you have people, me, myself. I will go somewhere and pay for customer service, you know what I'm saying, for better customer service. So we have to like, okay, listen, these people are putting money in our pocket. We have to treat them. Right. Man, I walk them Burberry, man, I walk them there, they, they, 
they embrace me, you know what I'm saying? When they give you the product, they, they put in these, the box is more expensive than the actual shirt. Mm-hmm. The bag is just the experience, you know what I'm saying? So we have to learn how to provide our people with a higher level and a higher quality of uh, customer service. At the same time, though, don't you think that comes from them not having the resources and kind of struggling because Burberry, Louis, all those stores, like they make money. So they're cheery. They're, oh, yes, come on in. But these black stores, like I said, people constantly come in there trying to, oh, goddamn, this much? This show ain't worth it? Whatever. So you don't think they have that chip on their shoulder where it's just like, it could be two, you know what I mean? It could be two ways, but. but being genuine customers, so that's, that's your business. True. You know what I'm saying? So no matter, you know, the customer's always right, even though they always, you know, that's not the case, we still have to conduct ourselves professionally. We True. still can't, you know, just when somebody come in, like, that made me only want to go back to that restaurant. But that's why I said it goes both ways, too. So them having customer service and then we, as the customers, not always coming in because you're black and it's a black store, you're looking for a deal. You know what I mean? I deal anywhere I go. Well, <laughs> you, <laughs> some people, some people, I'm, I'm but from that position, you got to see, right? like, they don't really have the resources, like, like how the white people can go and get these loans sometimes, you know what I mean? Because they, they have that generational wealth, their, their credit yeah, being good, still, their still, credit still. being good, you know what I mean? Right, but and if black right. people, like you say, starting from the bottom, it's so it's still, like you... I could, yeah, but that still does not take away a bit of common courtesy. You know what I'm saying? Good customer service comes from common courtesy. You know what I'm saying? If I put to a restaurant, you don't have this. You know what I'm saying? You're not, I'm not going to come out and just, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to be, I'm going to find a professional way, you know, so polite way to let you know. So how you think a, like, a place like McDonald's is so big? When some, most of the time you go to a McDonald's, their customer service sucks. Their machine, their ice cream machine don't work. Oh, because you know why? <laughs> because they are, like you were saying, they already established themselves. Mm-hmm. But you coming up trying to establish yourself, you want to attract people. Right. But no, it's crack. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're addicted to the french fries. <laughs> They're addicted. So you don't have to. It's just like you're in the street. Once your product is known, right. your customers, they don't even matter. It's going to sell itself. So we have to learn how to attract people, mm-hmm. you know, with common courtesy. Right. That may, I walk into a restaurant, there's no common courtesy. I'm, not, I'm, I'm never going back there again. You know? So common All courtesy, right. no matter what you're saying. I'll probably be back. Hmm? If that food good, I'll probably be back. Nah, it depends on how I got treated. <laughs> you know, it depends on how I got treated. For real? It could be good, but, you know, just like, like I say, I don't go to a lot of Haitian restaurants. Okay, so what about you go to a restaurant and their customer service is great. They give you extra food and they have a nice day and package it real nice and the food sucks. I'll give, I'll, I'll take that. You know why I'll take that? Because... In that situation, somebody trying to come up and they're doing, you know, saying they're attracting people. You know, what I'm saying it's just like I see somebody on the corner. But how you gonna make it with nasty food though? I might, I might go there and support. You know, what I'm saying just to support. Not somebody me. trying to build. I'd be like, yo, this, your food sucks. Yeah, you might get point. <laughs> hey, listen, man, you know the food is not too good, but I would take a if I had a choice. Yeah, I would. That being experience, treated, right? Uh-huh. I mean, pe- being treated politely, then going to somewhere the food is good, but I'm being treated like a dog. I would take that, you know, any day. You know, well, just, no, just me. I don't know, Ray. That's just me. <laughs> you know. I don't know, Ray, formerly known as Quench. <laughs> yeah, like like Prince stars. Okay. <laughs> Not for real. I don't know though, because it's like. Like we said, like the Haitian customer service in their restaurants, Jamaicans customer service, like this shit sucks, but the food be good. So it's just like, no matter what, like some of you are like, yeah, I'm hungry, want to go buy a food, and then you're just like, damn, but they rude as fuck, but that food good as fuck. Yeah. So you thinking about being satisfied more yeah. than you going in there well, and you, somebody treating you well. Like, that's how you want to get your will. Like, you know, it's, you, you're going grudgingly, you know what I'm saying? You don't want to happily go spend your money. It's like you're forced to go spend your mm-hmm. money because that's the option that's available. You know, just like you walk into a lot of these A-Rap stores in the hood, they treat us bad. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But yet, we would not stop going to their stores. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's, man, you walking in and looking at you all crazy, you know. And But then again, like, there's, there's not many options because most of the stores that you go in are owned by A-Rabs so or some that, Chinese. So or, we have to take the initiative. Thank you. We have to, because I have, um... I have a lot of cleaning clients, right? Mm-hmm. My cleaning business. And the worst experience that I've ever received is not from white people. 
you know, when I'm when I'm dealing with them, I like I might uh, I remember when I was actually going out and cleaning, and I go into their their residence. Man, listen, it's they they give me the keys. Oh, matter of fact, oh, I don't have my key. I have keys to these people's houses. Been in their house wow. one time, and they give me keys to their home. Wow. You know, but you go to a black person's house, it's like they watching you. Hey, you can leave. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And the Indians and the Chinese are even worse. Like, I mean, like they're horrible. You know what I'm saying? That's when I realized them people are truly racist. But that's what I'm saying. You don't think that that comes from like PTSD a little bit? Like, like especially like black people, the Chinese people too, because like with them, with them not PTSD. With them is they look at how we portray ourselves and they just run with that. Mm -hmm. But what else I say is PTSD. Right, because it's just like you know, it's usually your own people that's coming and robbing you and, and killing you and shit. You know what I mean? Right. That you know. So it's just like like I was just talking to somebody the other day where. It was on the news like a couple of years ago. This little black boy, he was like in high school, broke into somebody's house and the person shot him and killed him. And this nigga's sister was on the news on national TV and said, you didn't have to kill him. He just needed some money to go school shopping. How else he supposed to get money to buy school clothes? She said that on national TV. So yeah. like basically like you're trying to say you're supposed to let this dude break in your house and steal your shit that you work hard for because he don't have it. Was it black or white? Black! Okay, guess what? <laughs> that statement, somebody else looking at, they're going to take that statement and identify that across the board. Right. When it's it comes like all to, black people. Yeah, when it comes to black, they, are, they take one thing and just spread it. It's, it's unilateral. Mm -hmm. But everybody else is that particular individual. Right. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Jimmy shouldn't have did that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Black, man, they don't say might. They don't say, man, them niggas. Right. Man, them niggas right. horrible. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they just gonna spread it across the board. Just like when you see when they're talking about, like, something that happened, um, a black person, some something happened in the news, and they're like, oh, he's a thug, or, or he's yeah, a gangster, right, and, 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 you lines. know? But then if it's like a white boy that does the same thing, it's like, oh, he was troubled, and um, yeah. he had a bad upbringing, and you know what I mean? Like, they make... It sound like oh this is just an isolated situation but right. yeah, yeah yeah you're right and then i feel like that kind of helps with like the stigma of like you said like chinese people or, or whatever arabs how they generalize because of stuff like that right you know what i mean so it's like they're watching the news or something and they just seeing this and be like oh yeah, yeah that's that's how they are yeah, they have keywords you know what i mean when i be watching too like if 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 Something going on the news is involving a black male or whatever. They're gonna make sure they incorporate that. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. Twenty-seven year old black male, da 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 da. Uh -huh. uh, was caught this or whatever the situation may be. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But if it's a, a white or somebody, they're not gonna say that. They're gonna say twenty-seven year old man, mm -hmm. and that that just be the killer. Right. They gonna be, like when I got arrested, I have I had never been in trouble. I had a spotless record. Never got caught. Whatever the case may be, <laughs> according to Johnny Law, I have never I had right. nothing on my right. record. Right. I'm sitting there watching myself on the news, and I'll never forget they're saying, "Oh, we have finally apprehended the notorious ringleader." Wow! Yeah, really? They had the newspaper on and everything. So I'm sitting there, <laughs> finally <laughs> apprehended. Finally, many y'all been right, looking, they're looking for, for you. I don't remember ever being sought out. Right. You know what I'm saying? Ring leader to what? Right. You know what I'm saying? What what am I ring leader to? Right. You know making it worse so that right. like you don't have a chance. Right. Because then whatever even if it's like a trial or something they're gonna you look at it lost. like yeah. You know what I'm saying? We've been, been tried by the media. Mm -hmm. I already lost. Yeah. But that's what they do. I still have the newspaper article. I wanna see it. Yeah. That's I don't know if I have it on my phone. I had a copy but that was in several newspapers. Damn, that's crazy. They had all the newspapers, uh it was fun. I'm sitting there, and um, I was getting newspapers. I'm reading, and I'm seeing all my partners making the news. Mm -mm. You know, I remember after me, Delhi made the news. You know, when he got murdered. He made the news. Then all of a sudden, oh really? It was, it was on the news. Yeah, Delhi. I didn't news. know. I had the newspaper article. I had all that. And I was sitting there to collect the article. Wow. And then Clinton, them, Clinton and Biggs, they was all over the. Uh, had it in the newspaper even when it, when it got it from Jamaica that was in the newspaper and you know um, I think somebody killed uh, Big Boy in, in prison I don't know I, I don't think even so I don't know because I don't even get into that but 
that I have because it was weird. I, I looked it up because um, there's a, a site that you could go to that show you all the years and all the deaths in prison. Right. And his was like under investigation. Yeah, but they also they also want to say that. No, because there's some of them that say like the cause of death, heart attack, or uh, drug overdose, or uh, whatever, whatever. And then his was just what in if, quotations what if, under investigation. What if the police killed them. But that's what I'm saying. I no, think somebody killed them so in there. So this is, is, is especially up north. They they killing people and, and, yeah. and making it seem like mm-hmm. they over. I seen a guy. He um he had bronchitis really bad Mm-mm. and he had breathing issues. Older guy. Yeah. And he ended up dying. Could have been natural causes. Could have been whatever. Right. F- for them to kill the investigation and cover their tracks when they. The officers went in there, they planted some K2 in his pocket to say that he was smoking. Wow. And that's what killed him. It's just to, you know, hey, yeah. he was smoking. Right. Was, so it ain't no investigation. Yeah, just like, yeah, yeah. right. No, see, that's what, and everybody knew that this guy does not smoke. Right. He had bad reading. Uh, like, he, if he walked 10 feet, he got to stop asthma. Right, pain. right. You know what I'm saying? And that's what they did, just to cover yeah. it. So, in there, like, I don't know the details. You know, I normally I get all the, you know, in prison, we get the news quicker than outside. Yeah, that's what I want to hear some prison stories, man. 18 years, like, what's like the craziest thing that you saw happen in there? I can't even. I've seen a whole bunch of stuff. I've seen too much. What? You seen, like, people get killed? Yeah, i seen. Wow. Yeah, i seen. Uh, crazy. One of the craziest stories I've seen was. Matter of fact, that was last year. That was last year, like at the towards the end of my sentence, and this guy just went berserk over a tablet. Wow, really? And, yeah, his uh, his mother bought him a tablet. You know, in prison got tablets. Uh, his mother bought him a tablet, and soon she bought him like son of money bought him tablet. His mother passed. <gasps> so wow, so that shit probably has some sentimental value, it has though. Some real value, so. They come in there. The, they have the uh, what they call it, the search team. Mm-hmm. But the search team is like they come from the state. They they're not like in the prison. Like okay. when they come with the dogs and everything. Yeah. That'd be like the secretary of state's office that send them mm-hmm. with the FDLE. So they come in, you know, do their little search, whatnot, run the dogs through, and they hit the other side, the other quad, and they broke his tablet. Cause you know when they come in, they just throwing your stuff. Yeah, at yeah. Them. They broke his tablet. Oh no! So they broke the man's tablet, and the officers are coming to count. Cause right now prison is so bad. You know they like where I was at. We count we wanted to. The police come in, man. We're not locking in. You know what I'm saying? Like so when they finally get us locked in, they just leave us in there forever. Damn, so, man. We're not locking in. So. The officer came, and he was one of the good officers at that too. You know, he come through, get cigarettes, all that. He was, he was laid back. Yeah. And um, he came through, and he was like, "Man, listen, man, y'all don't gotta lock y'all doors, man. Just step in. I'ma count y'all, and y'all can come back out. Y'all know the dogs came through. Y'all need to shower, and, and you know, just step in y'all doors, and I'ma count, and y'all can." And this right after they broke that man's tablet. Yeah, they had broken and left. Yeah. Right. So he come through. He count. So he going to the next quad. It's all glass, so he can look right through. So when he went in there, he was already telling the officer, hey man, I broke my tablet. Damn. So when he walked in there, man, the guy just took off. What I mean, took Damn. off. He took off, beat him with a broom, broke the broom, stabbed him. I don't know how many times with the broom, Damn. broke his arm, and went on the, on a standoff. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not going to, y'all gonna replace this tablet. Yeah. And it was crazy when they, they wanted, he was in the gang, so his gang was like, man, listen, they talked to him, like, hey, man, just. It's chill. It was crazy because just how it happened, just just like that. But I couldn't imagine because that man probably had pictures of his mom on that tablet, right. all types of shit. Right. And he, oh, come on now, that's that's a messed up thing though because like you in prison or whatever, you still a human being. Like right, you know what I mean? Like yeah, treat some, me as yeah, such. Some of them they don't. And the, and the crazy thing is, it's it's kind of like the street too because some people they belong to prison. I ain't gonna sit up here. Yeah. Like some people they just idiots. <laughs> they belong in there. Yeah. You know, it just unfortunately the officer that he chose was just I think he should have touched with him touch hard. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. Real ass. That was a good guy. But but I was when I was kinda of straight. You know, I seen all type of crazy stuff. They Did you have to fight? <sighs> My first fight actually involved a knife. Who had the knife? Me. Really? Yeah. 
Wait, wait, did you? You mean murder nobody? No, nah, nah, okay. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> I'm like, damn, you a murderer too, nigga? Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> wait, so wait, what happened? Come on, now you got to tell me the story. I kind of speak Spanish a little, a little bit, right? Mm hmm. So, uh, Spanish guy, we had a business deal that kind of went bad. So, I told him, listen, I'm going to just reimburse whatever it was. Right. So, everybody I was involved in the deal, I say, listen, how do you want your money? We can, you know, but that was back then, so they didn't, we didn't have Cash App, right, right. PayPal, and all the other little easy ways. Cause right. Everybody in prison got Cash App. Now, right? Yeah, yeah everybody got Cash App. <laughs> you know, you Even know. that damn JPay shit. Yeah, you, no, can, you can send money through that, ain't it? Yeah, but no, that's that's money through JPEG is can't in prison. Money is cash out like real money. Okay, okay. You know, so um, so back then the only thing we had was uh, Western Union, mm -hmm. MoneyGram, and I only think Walmart. The Walmart was out yet. Damn. And um, so I say, hey, listen, how do you want your money? So everybody, this guy was like, hey man, just send it. You know, Walmart to Walmart. You know, I was, you know, I was trying to make little plays in there. Right. So he's like, oh, uh, well, you send it, send it Western Union. This guy, money grab. Well, my people's gonna go pick it up. Or when they come to visit, all your people's they'll just meet. Yeah. So this guy, he didn't want it Western Union because he had nobody to send it to. He did. So I told him, I tell your people to go get it. And they're like, no, we're not gonna go get it. So my people's calling his people's like, so now he's upset about something. Like he thinking I'm trying to take his money. Right. So he's speaking Spanish to you know his other compadres, not knowing that, that you I kind of understand Spanish. And one of his Spanish partners came to me, was like, "Hey, listen, I see him, you know, go get a knife." Wow. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, "Yeah." So I said, "Man, I ain't worried about him." You know what I'm saying? So I didn't really realize how dangerous prison was at the time. Oh, so, he was like a new, a new. Nah, it ain't, it ain't that. I just wasn't man, like, man, I ain't worried about that. You know, so. He um so the guy so my partner like man the guy just told you that he would go get a knife he need to rectify that like now nah, you can't go to sleep like that you in prison mm -mm. so I'm like man I ain't sweating dude man I ain't worried about him and turn around a day or two went by and my partner like man you still sleeping on that so I'm listening and they at the back passing the knife so when they passed the knife my partner like man you tripping. I said, man, I'm going to go deal with that. So, I grabbed a little 22, you know what I'm saying? Like, at the time, I wasn't told no, you know, we call it fire in the inside. Right. You know what I'm saying? Call but it, it's a knife. Yeah, you know, we call, call it a couple of things. <laughs> we call it the banger, the, fi the fire, you know, <laughs> that room, you know. So, I was like, man, let me get a deuce deuce. He slid me the deuce deuce. I caught dude in the corner. You know what I'm saying? Caught him in the corner. You know, do what I had to do until, man, listen, I ain't even heard him too bad. Just, you know, man, you got to go. Pack your stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, he ended up leaving. And I went into that guy five years later. In prison? Yeah. And what, what happened? He didn't even recognize me. Really? Yeah, he didn't even recognize me. He and then, you see how crazy that is? Like, suppose, like, y'all really got into something and, like, he stabbed you up or something crazy. And that man didn't even know your face. Yeah, he didn't recognize me. He, um, he kind of, but didn't. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Probably like, look, like, he's looking at me because you know, like, where I know you from, or like, some you know, shit. He, yeah. One day, we're standing in the, in the child line, and he asked, he's like, Man, you from Miami? Because this is what has happened. I was like, Um, I was like, No, nah, I'm from Bowood. He's like, Okay, so he's like, Um, he asked me another question. I'm like, Nah, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm looking at him, I, he knows me, right. I know it's him, but it's like he's just unsure, yeah, and he just, and that was that. You know, so, but I always knew from the time he got off the bus, and I seen him. I gotta keep an eye on them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But but that's a it's a dangerous spot. A lot of people they come telling the stories like, you know, it's all sweet and that I and I'm telling you what I'm bragging, there's nothing in prison that when it comes to living comfortable that I ain't, you know right. the only thing I done do the only thing I didn't do in prison, I ain't messing with man and I ain't telling nobody. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Other than that, I don't did it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I ain't no, oh, ain't stuck none of my ass either, cause a lot of them doing that. You know yeah, no. Other than that, I don't did it. I don't made kids in prison. You know, kept kept a cell phone in prison. Oh yeah, Let, let's talk about this phone. Oh, this thing got the fucking eighties. You know, brick just, phone. Like where the fuck did that come from? <laughs> that's, that's another story but no but what about like I heard that there's this thing that these guys are doing in prison where they're putting these pearls in their penis I heard about that what is that for I don't even know I heard about that 
<laughs> you know, anything in prison, anything dealing with penis, you know, I stay away from that. But the thing about it is, who's doing this? Exactly. It's the other prisoners, right? Yeah. So, a nigga, you just letting a nigga experiment on you, basically. That's, that's that nigga could possibly cut your shit and cut your dick off. They, it's not even that. How you sanitizing it? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You, you, you could get an infection, your shit fall off, all types of shit. Like, niggas is crazy. Yeah, but it's, I mean, I don't see everything. I don't see dudes just stabbed up. They don't want to go to medical. And, you know, they take a paper clip, turn it into a needle. And stitch each other up, you know what I'm saying? What? I don't see it. I don't see it at all. You know, I don't see it at all. Man, so like, how many times did you move around? Like, how many different prisons were um, you at? Probably like five or six. And where where was the worst? Martin. Martin County. Martin Martin CI. Yes. Why? Why was that yeah, the worst? Listen, <laughs> they call it Murder Martin, and it, it lives up to that name. And matter of fact, me and Biggs was there at, at the same time. Wow. And um, I was at Martin. I was at Hardy. That's over there by Tampa, close like mm-hmm. Lincoln. And that was a laid back institution. You rarely, you might see a fight here and there. Yeah. But it pretty much it was a gambler's camp. Everybody okay. just gamble, you know what I'm saying? It was, that's the type, you know, they smoke, get high, whatnot. And <clears throat> when I, while I was in there, I was uh, working in education. Mm-hmm. I was a certified tutor. I got you oh, know, that's what's up. I was teaching GED and stuff, and um, they needed a teacher at Martin. Mm-hmm. So out the blue, they wake me up, say, "Hey, you transfer him, transfer." Him. And at this point, you didn't know nothing about I him. Nothing. Okay. I was, I was good. I had, you know, I had just lost a phone, just bought another in prison. The phones at the time. It's them, a commodity. Yeah, them, them twelve dollar flip phones you get at Walmart mm-hmm. was four hundred dollars. Damn. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I remember your ass was stay here me up, and then I won't hear from you from like for months. <laughs> but I kept the phone though. I kept yeah. The phone. 2009 all the way back, I, I kept the phone. Mm-hmm. You know, got my first Galaxy like 13, like back 2013. Then smartphone, and I could never go back to a flip. Yeah. But anyhow, they wake me up, say, "Hey, you're transferring." So I'm like, transferring. I'm I'm mad because. I am made it, I'm comfortable now, yeah. making a little money, you know what I'm saying, I got, you know, and I don't know where I'm going, so by the time I get, because you know when you transfer, it's not, you get up that morning, and they transfer you to the next institution, mm-hmm. it don't happen like that, you wake up, gotta go through the whole process, strip, all that there, get yeah, shot and like you a new prisoner, right. yeah, and depending how far you are from the institution you're going, you have to go through reception centers, so, that, I had to go from Hardy, to Orlando Reception Center, Central Florida Reception Center, and I was there for like a week. Oh. And from there, I got to go to South Florida, which is down in Miami, mm-hmm. and I was there for a couple of days, and then ended up at Martin. So I get to Martin, and um, you know, all you hear stories, it's like, hey, it's like Alcatraz, you know, that's your Damn. Year. So <laughs> you hear the stories, so I get there, as soon as you get off the bus, the officer like, hey, listen, this is your only opportunity to check in. If you check in, once you're on the compound, you got to give a name. Check in, be like, you're going straight to PC. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They call it uh, PM in there, Protective Management. Yeah. So you're scared, you want to be on the compound, you can check in now. We're going to put you in PC, we in the room by yourself, mm-hmm. behind the door and, and whatnot. Yeah. So you got these tough guys. Man, yeah, man, man, shoot, man, I've been doing this. You okay. Know? So, you know I me, mean? I'm quiet. I don't do no talking, you know what I'm saying? So at that time, I had to be in prison 10 years. And, you know, I hit the compound. Soon I get in the compound, I knew my roommate from another institution. We used to play soccer together. Oh, that's a good thing. Right? So, he seems old Spanish, old Spanish poppy. And he looked at me. He was like, Q. He said, man, this is not like Hardy. Damn. You know what I'm saying? He was, he was like, man, he said, this is very dangerous. He had a metal cane because he had back problems. Mm-hmm. And he was like, if you knew that, use it. He kept wow. it right by the door. So, um, so I'm like, man, I've been doing this 10 years, man, I ain't even worried about that, man. I know how to handle myself. And um, you know, I'm just telling you that next morning, going to breakfast, it's like maybe 6 in the morning, we in line and standing there. I'm crispy, got my crisp blues on, brand new rings on, you know, got to stay fresh, you know. You got a few Wait, how you iron your clothes? Oh, that's a whole other story. When done okay. With so, so uh, I'm standing in line. And I just felt the movement because when in prison you get spider senses. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like oh, yeah. seriously, like mm-hmm. you can you can step somewhere 
and you already you know you feel it like the energy yeah. so I'm standing in line and I felt something wasn't right and at that moment I felt somebody come over my shoulder and they reached from over my shoulder from behind me and sliced the guy's face that was right in front of me so blood yeah. everywhere so they let this stuff they fight me the dude trying to keep up blood he lose so much blood till he just like fainting you know what I'm saying so I'm like damn like I'm like, man, yeah. So at that moment, <laughs> I need that cane. At that moment, I get back to the dorm. I get back to the dorm. Um, little partner, I say, hey, man, listen, man, I got a fifty for you, man. I need some fire. You know what I'm saying? Damn. So I messed around. I just put one in the dorm. Took one outside on my yard and buried it on it. Buried it in the yard with some, cause you know, cause a lot of people they keep it on them. Right. But you risking yourself cause you yeah, are walking. Mm -hmm. Cause they'll you go in the hallway and they'll be like, hey, everybody stop. It comes it's back searching. with a metal detector because yeah. it's a dangerous spot. But that's one of those spots. You living like that, not living like that, you got to stay strapped. Right. You know what I'm saying? Let you be like me. I like to hang out. I like to have phones. I like, and you have a phone, you're not in the game. And then you just like, hear about it. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, man, listen. So I had it like James Bond in there. You walking, I had knives <laughs> stuck on the wall. You don't even know it. You know what I'm saying? Paint on the wall. You don't even know it. I had a machete this long. At one point, and it was just yeah, that was a day. That was the worst though. It was it was somebody getting murdered like every four months. It'd be a murder. Wow. Yeah, stayed on lockdown. Crazy. Yeah, stayed on lockdown. So what would you say was the most laid back? Oh my goodness, this is I was in prison paradise. Where? South Bay. Where is that? Yeah, that's um out there by Bell Glades. Oh really? Oh yeah, man, was, that's prison. And that's crazy for Bell Glade is so bad. Yeah, but like that was, bad, yeah. But, man, listen, that prison there, that's that was I did everything under the I was me and my partner probably was just I think we was the only two on the compound what just Armani watch on this wrist. Mm -mm. Armani watch on this wrist. Mm -mm. Jordan's on. Matter of fact, I wish I had the video, you'll believe it. I was wiping my ass with money. Literally. Hell no. Nah. Literally. Like I'm literally sitting on the toilet. But you see why niggas be going back to prison? Because sometimes I feel like some dudes, they have an easier life in there yeah, than they do outside. Yeah, because yeah, in there, the only thing you got to worry about is really just you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But some dudes, they go back to prison because they got lovers in there. Well, yeah, yeah, we you know, know that. But I mean, like, you in prison, most of the time, a lot of these dudes, because I, I watch that show, Love After Lockup. And a lot of these dudes find somebody outside that take care of them, send them fucking money, so they got somewhere to sleep. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They got money, like you said, they making money in there. And it's like I feel like that's why they they go back. They they're comfortable there. They don't have to work. You know what I mean? They got a bitch on the outside taking care of them, and it's just easy for them. Yeah, I mean. But like you said, I know a lot of them that do be like I watch. Um, they, it's a show that I watch. Um. I forgot what it's called, but it was a dude in there that got his wife on the outside. He had to do like five years or something like that. Got his wife on the outside, but while he in prison, he got his bitch in prison. Not a bitch, not a female, a dude. Yeah, there's a lot of them. And he's just like, he's like, yeah, you know, I don't fuck nobody in the ass, but I'm, I make him give me head. You know what I mean? That, it's just like, you know, that's the cr that's the thing I never understood. Cause in there they have. They call them boys. Mm -hmm. The boys is the the faggot, or okay. the gay man. Yeah, right. not, you know, we got politically be correct. correct. Yeah, I apologize. <laughs> but and um and then you have, I guess, the boyfriend. Mm -hmm. The boyfriend feels just because he is pitching and not receiving, right. he is not gay. He's not gay. And I'm like, hold on, you're a whole homosexual, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's a, or a bisexual, whatever you yeah, want to call yeah, it, because they still mess with women. Yeah, and that's that's what I never understood how you. You know, you're messing with the same sex, but then you're saying you're not a homosexual. Right. I never understood that. Yeah. And that's a concept that a lot of them, you know, have in their mind. Like, so well, they don't see nothing wrong with it. Right. Like, mm -hmm. nah, and it just never. And then, and they they got wives and girlfriends on the outside. Oh, they have man. no clue. That was the craziest thing. I went to visit. Right. There was this one dude, stay fresh. You know what I'm saying? Like handsome guy, and had two of the baddest chicks coming to see him. Wow. I be seeing this visit. He be sweating my table. I'm sweating his table. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can like, man, late man, who that that came to see you? Like, man, that is my friend. You know what I'm saying? Like, and every weekend he's out there. And turn around, this man didn't even have long to go home. And there was uh, a homosexual. Mm -hmm. correct. <laughs> Rainbow people. Yeah, you know, the letter people, that's what I call them. <laughs> and turn around, he's messing with this, you know. And he couldn't just wait. And this man have two of the 
baddest. I'm talking about models coming to see him. Like, you know what I'm saying? And pussy was probably bad. <laughs> so he probably just weak. <laughs> that booty, that booty was tighter than they pussy. That's why. <laughs> I'm sitting there like, man, this is that's crazy. <laughs> but yeah, that's 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 how it is for real. Because I watched that show and I'm just like. This thing got a whole wife, whole girlfriend. I mean, I don't know what she looked like, but somebody taking care of him while he in there. Somebody that's gonna be there for him when he get out, and he got this dude that he messing with in there. Like, then you can't just jack off the fuck. I got tired of jacking off. I did. Damn. Oh, I seen that they be making that thing with the with the toilet tissue roll and the yeah, and yeah. a towel and shit. Yeah, the and the Vaseline. Never did that. That's what it's called, Fifi. Yeah. Yeah, I never did that. <laughs> I got tired of it. I'm gonna get the officer. Well, okay, so yeah, tell me about that. So wait, that's who you have a baby with? No, I have actually. I was with the officer for like four years, and had did, did they ever find out that you were here with Zealand? Nah, nah, they never did. Wait, so where did y'all go and have sex? Like the boom closet? We on air. I'm not gonna. Exp- <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. <laughs> For the people because know. I be watching oranges and new black and shit, and I see they be going and yeah. fucking in the broom closet. Yeah, and but stuff. I'm not gonna, you know, you, you might have officers, officials, you know, be, yeah, I'm not gonna, they really. know that shit be going on. Yeah, they know, but I'm not gonna say how it was happening, you know what I'm saying? Because you know, I have brothers, you know, still in that situation. I want to, y'all had control. a glory hole? Nah, <laughs> she'll just put her booty up against the thing. Nah, nah. <laughs> nah, we was bold. Yeah, we was bold. We had, we had teams, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was messing with her. And, and you got somebody looking out her her, her co-worker her mm-hmm. friend you know what I'm saying she had a boyfriend there mm-hmm. and we just made sure they made sure they always worked on the same shift you know what I'm saying and wait but did, did these did they have like dudes on the outside and y'all was just like they saw a nigga in prison nah no not listen we had no dude on the outside okay. but but that's how this is how we did it you know we looked out we made sure that party when they doing their thing yeah we'll be looking out and we'll fight. I, got, I almost got caught a couple of times, but mm-hmm, we just, mm-hmm. you know, swapped and it was like that for like four years. So, how did you end up having a baby or getting somebody pregnant? Okay, you seen that picture of me on Facebook with I had the blue hat on while I was still in prison, like I was sitting in the car? I think so. I seen and a lot every, of fucking and, pictures. And everybody, was, they thought I was out. This was like 2017. Mm-hmm. And everybody was like, bro, you out? You out? I'm not gonna say how it happened, but I was able, mm. you know, what I'm saying to pull strings mm-hmm. and do things that you know, what I'm saying, yeah. Because like I always tell people, like, how you did that? Well, I left the street. I was, I'm not not the bad. I was I did what I wanted. Right. So when I got in there, I'm gonna do what I want. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not gonna like um, reduce how I live or accept the lower standard. Right. Because he's my, right. So I was like, man, you know what? If I want some. I'm gonna get it, you know what I'm saying. So when I felt like, hey man, you know what? I don't want to wear uh, 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 what, what a lot of people they had G-Shocks, they were smuggling and stuff like that, selling in. I don't want a G-Shock, man. I want an Armani watch. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So next thing you know, I had an Armani watch. Then I had two of them. You know what I mean? So you know, so you still just, had that hustler mentality. Yeah, so that shit ain't gonna. You still do now? No, I mean, yeah, it's it, it's a mentality. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Some people they have this is. It's called an innate character trait. Some people they have a character trait that's natural, born in them, is right. bred in them, mm-hmm. and some people they have acquired talents. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like an acquired skill. Right. Like you have some people they draw with their eyes closed since they were born. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some they can draw, but that they have learn. to go learn. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's the same thing with hustling. You know what I'm saying? Same thing. Hustling is just an ambition. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, people they all, I mean, they can sell anything. Like, uh, who is it? Uh, Kobe. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He's just good with his mouth. You know what I'm saying? Like, he can pretty much sell. He just don't think he realized that yet. Right. But he's just good with his mouth. He can <laughs> sell things just you by talking. know it. He probably started. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> that's the inner quality. You know what I'm saying? So, you have to learn how to use that and turn that into your hustle. You know what I'm saying? Me, I just know, for example, like I got the, the cleaning business. Mm-hmm. That's providing a service. Right. And... I have to find all type of resources and learn about how to go into how to make it prosperous. You know what I'm saying? But with this, it's just selling itself. Yeah. Why? Because I learned that 
I'm better at selling a product because right. that's what I've been doing right, I've always right, known right. than selling a service mm-hmm. providing a service so we just have to find our niche we just have to find what we're good at what's natural in us and turn that into the money you know what I'm saying so other than that you're going to take a lot of work to learn that skill exactly yeah because like you said selling a service I think is a lot harder than selling a product it especially depends. something like water it depends like for example Kobe I think he's good at selling the service because he's good at Right, right. You know, mm. you know, but me, I've I've never been a speaker. Right, I've always been the choir, the choir reserve type, and I just try to find to capitalize on where hey, you know what, I can sell this, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna go sell it, a product that actually sells itself that don't require me doing much talking. Right, you know, so now this is a product that sells itself because everybody, all eight billion people on the face of Earth, is, water. is addicted to water. Uh huh. You know. So is there anybody that you were locked up Like you said you know some of the people in there You were like you know Just back me in with this So is there anybody that you were locked up with That you're like Either that they're out now or they're still in there That you're like yo I got a spot for you When you get out I got you a job You know what I mean no, I, anyway. people. Yeah? Um, I have I have my barber mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying Shout out to you know Detroit All of from Detroit Um but um, Bevel Blades, he, that man, his skill with the barber is just, he's just immaculate. And is it, that's something that he learned in prison? No, nah, that's, 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 that's something he been doing, but okay. in there that became his bread and butter. Right. And he got out, and that's what he's doing. And to this day, he still cuts my hair. That's what's up. You know, he was cutting my hair in there. He, he still cut my hair to this day. That's what's um, up. He's out of, you know, Mango Man. I know everybody know Mango Man. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Me and Mango was together, working the same squad. I really? told Mango how to use a weed eater, you know what I'm saying? We still communicate, you know what I'm saying? He doing this. It's, it's, it's a bunch of people that, you know, that I was in there. Because I try to surround myself with people that was trying to go somewhere. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. If you were just like... Have that know, prison mentality. I'm not yeah. trying to, you know, because mm-hmm. it's a different set of laws in there. It's a totally different set of laws in there. It's not like the outside. Right. You know, so I try to, people that was not stuck in the prison mentality. Yeah. For example, in prison, like, if somebody's outside that door right now, mm-hmm. we're having this, this podcast, you know, having this, if somebody's outside the door, a group of people, they're making noise, you know, saying, I c- respect will tell you, hey, you know, there's people in there, they, you know, Doing something productive in prison, they don't they don't respect that. Yeah. They be doing it. And you be like, hey, bro, you know what I'm saying? I'm here trying to sleep. Now, nigga, want to fight you? You know what I'm saying? They be like, man, you in prison? Okay. So now <laughs> I always thought because you in prison, it gives you the you know, seeing the grounds to disrespect some. Right. You know, so these are the type of mentality people have in prison. Yeah. You know, what I'm saying common courtesy. If you live next door to somebody, you blasting music, they are gonna call the police. Right. Now you got a noise pollution disturbing the people. Right, right. But in prison, it's like, oh, you in prison, so I'm allowed to disrespect you because yeah. I'm allowed to be disrespectful. And that's the thing. A lot of the fucking and CEOs and shit, they allow that shit. They're not gonna step in and try to stop it. They yeah. know that it's a nigga don't like you and nigga wanna fight you and shit. Yeah, Some of them be knowing. It's a different rule for them too. Yeah. In prison, in prison, it just kinda like the street, we don't get involved with the law. Right. You know what I'm saying? So and then in there it's like it becomes a bigger problem when they get involved. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Say for example, uh, two people going through it and one go let's just say a dude got stabbed up and he goes to the police right trying to hey I need to go to medical he's a snitch he's a snitch yeah you know what I'm saying and they come grab the dude that stabbed him and so they're like man man he done told on me man mm-hmm. like but the dude, even worse right so now, but the dude Jimmy just got stabbed right he need help might have eternal bleeding <laughs> he might have whatever the case may be and he trying to get the medical. I don't see people die trying to walk the medical. Damn. You know what I'm saying? They they instead of you know, hey man, send, send medical down here, man. They actually man, they try to walk and boom, fall down and die. Mm-mm. You know what I'm saying? Just because you know, I'm not seeing all type of stuff in prison though. Yeah. Man, I'm just glad that you're out of there and you're doing positive things because. Just like all the stories you just told, that is not the place to be. No, nah, it's not. Mm-mm. No, nah, it's not. Unless you mean use that, you know. I mean, yeah. yeah, but even still, like you said, like some of the shit, they, you move to a new spot and you, a nigga gets slashed in his face right in front of you. Like shit like that. It's like, even if you're in there making money or doing positive yeah, it's things, not, it's still it's just not the shit that's right. going on around yeah. you that's just like, how can you live like this and be comfortable? You know? Know? I know towards the end of my city where it got harder and harder because you know Yeah, because at the time you're just like, like damn like, damn I'm ready to get out of here. Yeah. And then I made it out with the work release and then sent me back. 
Why? And I'm sitting there. That's a whole other story. Oh, gosh. You know, they thought I was illegal in the country. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, they did. They thought I was illegal. Wait, you was at ICE for a little while? No, everybody really? thought I was at ICE. Oh, okay. For but they sent me back because they were saying, um, they was, oh, I'm not a U.S. citizen. I'm like, I'm not a U.S. citizen. They was just trying something, boy. Right. So, <laughs> so they sent me back to prison saying, when I'm done, ICE going to come get me. I'm like, y'all tripping. You know, I'm, you know. And sh sure enough, you know, walk right out the gate. Mm -mm. Showed him my certificate of citizenship. Right. I've been here since I was a kid. You know, my parents were citizens since I was a kid. Right. <laughs> so that was that situation. So I had battles after battles. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause I mean, I got locked up in Broward, and that was one battle. Fighting that battle, I had to go fight a battle in Miami. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I had to deal with stuff down there, and then. It was battle after battle, but one thing, you know, when somebody work out, at the end of the, you know, week, six months, they appreciate what they see. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's what you see, you know, a diamond. You know, diamond not created from just laying in the dirt. Oh, no. Now it's created from pressure. pressure. You know what I'm saying? So, Apply that pressure. So you, you, you ain't got no pressure on you, you ain't doing nothing. Right. You know what I'm saying? If you fold under pressure, you ain't meant to be a diamond. You're a cubic scone. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just truth to the matter. You know what I'm saying? Everybody can be a diamond. You know what I'm saying? Right. Some rubies. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Some of the uh, topaz. You know? <laughs> not to lessen your value, but yeah, you just everybody not a diamond. Everybody can be a diamond. It can't, can't, everybody can't. But the thing is, if you are a topaz, you know what I'm saying? No, that's what. You know, that's the amount of pressure that you couldn't withstand. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Don't know Because a lot of people, they try to put more on themselves. It's people like, oh, God's not going to put more than you can bear. Nah, God didn't put, you put that on yourself. Right, right. It might not be a decision you're making right now, mm -hmm. but decision you, a decision you made two years ago, this is the ramification right. two years later. Mm -hmm. You know, just like me. It's decisions I made a pe over a period exactly. of time. I thought I was getting away. Exactly. And here it is. I want to pay half my adult life. Right. If no matter that, my yes. whole entire dog. Yeah, yeah. My entire almost adult 20 life. years. You know what I'm saying? For decisions that I was making, you know what I'm saying? As a kid. That's right. how I see kids today. They think they're so smart. And I'm like, man, listen, I already see where it's going. Yeah. You know, there's, there's just no way around it. I already see where it's going. So, you know. Well, sometimes people got to make their own mistakes because you tell them, like, look, I've been there and they think they're invincible. Right. You know? So. Yeah. It's not about making mistakes. It's knowing what you can stand. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. If you're a topaz, know this is how much pressure you can stand. Right. You know, because now you might well try to put yourself in a situation where you cannot withstand that much pressure. Mm -hmm. I see people kill themselves. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I remember I was sitting in confinement. I did six months in confinement. And I'm looking at my window, and the dude just swinging in his cell. Wow. You know what I'm saying? He couldn't handle the pressure. He killed himself. Damn. You know, and I seen that stuff. dude jumped over the rail trying to kill himself. I seen the story over and over because they can't handle the pressure. So you know, but when like, they was out on the street, boy, they was living life. Right. Yeah. You know so even in there, you know, what I'm saying you try to run in a league that that's not. You know, a lot of these dudes they go to prison and try to get involved with gangs, and they don't really realize that's not what they want. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't see dudes they gonna get in the gang, and soon they get in the gang, and they like, man, here. They give him a knife, hey man, we need such and such on the plate, we need you, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. And you not you not you built for that. You're not built for that. Mm -hmm. But it's an option. It's a, you got a choice now. Right. It's either you gonna get stabbed for not stabbing them. Right. You know what I'm saying? Or you gonna stab them and get, you get you know what I'm saying? So it's like you wasn't prepared, you don't know what you're getting yourself into. That's and, crazy, man. Yeah, it ju it's it just how it is. I've seen it over and over, you know. Well, like I said, I'm so glad that you're out, you're back here, and you're doing good, positive stuff, and I just see it's only up from here. No, you know what I'm saying? I've already been at the bottom, you know what I'm saying? So, so what's your um IG where people can find you and follow you? Oh, no, uh, Maji, Maji underscore, Maji Spring underscore Water um, on Instagram, mm -hmm. uh, Maji Spring Water on TikTok, um, you can contact me directly at four seven uh seven six four oh five twelve you know yeah that's and this is the phone you want when you call that this, this the, the brick phone, phone. Yeah, that's the brick phone y'all you know. it works yeah. it's real <laughs> so, uh, i witnessed it this shit sound like a whole boom box when it ring yeah so <laughs> um also at uh, maji.com you know same website and that's this is the promo bottle 
you know what I'm saying, the labeling, this is official water, but it's the labeling. But y'all you know see it's legit, you know? you know what I'm saying? Y'all stay tuned because instead of that Zephyr Hills and shit like that, y'all need to be copping this Maji. Oh, so Zephyr Hill, Zephyr Hill, I'm not going to call out a specific name, but a lot of the waters that people drink, anything that's the purified water mm -hmm. should be avoided. Right. Okay. Or drinking water. Right, drinking mm -hmm. water. Even a lot of stuff that say alkaline water. Oh, yeah. Because a lot of these waters that say alkaline, they're in plastic bottles. It's not, it's not supposed to be in a plastic it's not bottle. Even, it's supposed to be in glass, and it's supposed to be dark. Not even that. That I agree, but it's even, it get more, a lot of people, they doing, they're putting, uh, I'm trying to think the scientific name is uh, bicarbonate. Mm -hmm. Something's bicarbonate. Some sodium. I can't remember the full name. They're adding. It's baking it. soda. Hell that they're adding to the water to call it alkaline to raise because they'll raise the alkaline level right. but it's artificial right it's not from the natural minerals that's occurring in nature right see what maji is the natural minerals that's occurring in nature you know and um and you have a lot of from this one water you look at the look at the the back it says ingredients right how water got ingredients it just say simply water unless you're giving the minerals that's in the water right right it has ingredients there's in one um I can't remember which one, but uh, it says purified water. But when you look at the back of it, where the the source where the water comes from, it says Miami Municipal Water. Right. Municipal is cities, so that's city that's water. City, right. So uh, see, when, when it's uh, anything purified water, the water source it could be from anywhere. Anywhere. It could be purified sewer water. Mm -hmm. You know, it, they, they just. Add chemicals to right, take out the germs and, and all mm -hmm. that. They add it, and they have to yeah. have it certain parts per million underneath the certain parts right, per million right, right. with the mm -hmm. microbes and all that there, and it's certified. Hey, this is drinking water. Yep. So you can go get a <laughs> case of twenty four or forty eight for three dollars, but what are you drinking? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? You taking the same water you flush down the toilet and then just drop adding some shit in it, and, and, and here you right drink this, you. and then and then wonder why you sick. Right, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, for a water to be labeled spring water, mm -hmm. it cannot go through that process. Right. It, it comes from a natural spring. It's from a natural spring. Mm -hmm. And it, ha it go through a small process, you know what I'm saying, to make sure that it's not... Just polluted. to take out, like, rocks and right. shit like that out of it. Yeah. Even the rocks are actually, that's where the minerals are at. Yeah, because that's like how um, they show when people are like in the wild or something like that. And the way how they purify their water, they put the coal mm -hmm. and the rocks and shit like that in the... Put it through yeah. that, and the coal soaks up all the fucking bacteria and all the bad stuff. Right, and so, then you can drink it. But even if you don't uh, drink maji, I encourage whoever do not drink that purified. Man, fuck that. Drink that motherfucking maji water. You see what I'm saying? Support black businesses. This uh, black man doing good things. He done been through some stuff. He turned his life around. And support the shit. Support. Why not? You buy Zephyr Hills. You buy Publix water, you buy the sunny, and the sunny tastes like lead to me. You know what I mean? So why not? Oh, this the tasting. What I what I tend to do because a lot of people are like, man, why are you not out selling bottles? I'm like, I'm not. That's not my aim. Mm -hmm. You know, I got a bigger purpose. So a lot of times I pass out the water, and I don't really tell people, hey, you know, this is my water. So recently. Uh, it was an event and I brought water mm -hmm. you know just hey I'm a sponsor here goes some water and um I'm sitting at the table and I hear um it had been he had been probably like in his teenager maybe 17 18 and I just heard this was three days ago hmm. and I heard damn this water's busting <laughs> and I turned around and look this man had this water in his hand like wow you know what I'm saying and, and I'm sitting there I'm like man you know what Cause everybody that that drinks it, it, it they like, man, where did you get this water from? Good. Like the quality of it, you know, is good. It's, yeah, it's very good quality. It tastes yeah. good. Um, somebody say it tastes better when it's chilled. You know, some say it tastes better when that room temperature. Yeah, I like room temperature you know, water. For me, it is. It just the water. It's just good. water. You know? And your your body actually absorbs it better when it's room temperature because when it's cold, it shocks your and, right. your system and shit. You know what I mean? I know some stuff, y'all. So, you know, but a lot of people, like I say, a lot of people, they, they, they enjoy the quality of the water, and I surely do, too, you know. Well, Ray, formerly known as Quench, you know what I'm saying? 
it's always good you definitely got to come back and we got to you know in, in a year i want you to come back and we're going to talk about this see where you at with this shit you know what i'm saying because like you said we're going to manifest this shit in a year you're going to be in fucking grocery stores fucking walmart all of that you know what i'm saying and motherfucking breathe easy Ray, formerly known as Quench, Maji Water, Water, founder, right? Founder. Founder of Maji Water, y'all. Check it out. Stay tuned because it's going to be everywhere and y'all going to be drinking this shit and y'all going to be healthy and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Breathe easy, motherfucking T True, my boy Ray, formerly known as Quench. We out. All right. Hey. Two times, motherfucker. Breathe easy, motherfucking T True.